So now we're going to have a look at um, how to actually persist the, the models that we create. So we, we already had created some instances, instantiated the objects from the generated classes. But now uh, what we want to do is these instances, they are, again, kind of models, and we want to be able to store them as well. So this is what we're going to do in this section. Um, now I have imported the project, a fresh project, uh, just to make sure that I have all the elements in my diagrams. What we're going to do is now we need to, again, uh, generate the, the code, because you see that uh, it doesn't have any of the code generated. So we can just say, uh, generate the model code. And yeah, we don't need the, I think we don't need the editors for this. So let's just only generate the model code. Um, good. And then what we need to do to store a new model, we would create a new project, a new plugin project. So we create a new plugin project. Um, now we call it instance. So new project, a plugin project, uh, that's the name. This all looks fine. Um, yeah, we could just say finish. We open the plugin development perspective and we configure the dependencies. So now there are a few dependencies that we need. We need the EMF eCore again. Um, we also want the EMF eCore uh, XMI. This is because the format that we're saving it in will be uh, XMI format, which is like a, I think, XML interchange or, or something like that. Um, and then we need, of course, the dependency to the project where we generated our code. So this would be the, the web page model one. Um, that we have access to the APIs. Now here we create a new class, um, new class. That's already the right package. We call this class um, create safe tester because we are basically just checking whether we can create and save models. And this is the code that goes into this class. We'll go over it. Uh, very soon, let's see, it compiles. Okay, so the different steps that are happening here, um, <clears throat> we have a main method where we again uh, get, initialize the, the model. This is a default line that you would always need. Then we create the factory or we get an instance of the factory and the factory, this is what we did uh, previously. Uh, when we created instances of the classes uh, here we again can say create web and it gives us an instance of the class web that we defined the same for web page we can give some information here um, and then we can try to save this we for this we need to create this um, we need yeah, to access the extension to factory map because we then want to say that whatever has the file extension website, we should use the XMI resource factory impl. And this one is going to make sure that uh, we can then save things with this extension using uh, this factory that makes sure that whatever we try to save, it puts it in the right XMI format here, this uh, interchange format. Then we need to create a resource set because that's where in Eclipse, that's where the files basically live or which are descriptions of files, um, a bit more abstract because resources could be other things, but that's just standard stuff that is not only um, yeah, restricted to EMF. This is also for, for other things you might do with Eclipse plugins. Um, so it's a bit more, more complex, but yeah, that's how it works. And then finally, in this resource, you want to add the contents. That the contents here, you add the my web because that's the one um, that we 
instantiated. And if you remember, we had this composition, these many, many of these uh, composition relationships between the classes. So actually the page here, the web page that we created, it is part of the My Web. That's why we only need to add the My Web to the contents. Um, if we would have stuff which is not in a composition relation, then we would also have to add this to the contents, but we would have to be a bit careful because if we add something to the contents, like here, if we would add page to the contents as well, um, the storing it in the XMI format might mess up with the <clears throat> composition relationship. So yeah, whatever is, uh, already part of the elements you have added to the model, that's fine. If you have stuff which is not part of these elements, then you need to add them uh, to the resource contents manually. And then we uh, save it. There are some options. We just use no options and um, that's it. Then we should have this file. So let's see if we can run this. Um, just running this as a normal Java application because we had the main method. Uh, we executed this thing. Then we might want to refresh the file system. And on the website, we see this my website. Um, now, I'm not sure if this tries to open with Internet Explorer. So we can uh, say open with maybe um, text editor so we can see what it looks like. Uh, and then here we can see the main web page and uh, the web. So the web contains one web page, and these are the elements uh, that we put in. So if we want to put it side by side, or maybe, yeah, like that. Um, <clears throat> here we basically, this my web, did we give it a name? Um, does it have a name? No, we just edit the pages. Let's check if we can give it a name. My web set. It has a name, so uh, it's called my web. Uh, and then let's see what happens if we rewrite this. We have to refresh this, uh, or it just looks like it might have refreshed automatically. Yep. <laughs> so here now, um, we see this is the web thing, and here is the parameter that we just added. Uh, then similarly, uh, this, you see that it's in the web page. Um, we actually have the, in the, in the web, we actually have the pages contained. Um, and that's because this <clears throat> page element here is, uh, in this containment relation with the name index. Uh, so here the page had the name index. Let's see what happens if we have multiple ones. It's again important that if we want another instance, we, we need to use the factory to create these instances. Um, so let's maybe, you know, this is not a good place here. Let's move this there. And then let's create a new web page. And let's also maybe just set the name of that thing. Um, so page two, set name to another page. And then of course, for this to be part of the model, we have to, um, so right now this thing just lives on its own, right? Uh, so what we could do is we could add it to the uh, contents here of the, the resource set. So uh, let's maybe do that. We would add the page two to the contents. Now it's not part of the web. Uh, it should live on its own. We run this and yep, this is how it's generated. So now uh, here we see that we have the web and then below there on its own, we have the web page. So now let's uh, undo that and say, actually we want this web page to be part of this web in terms of the composition relationship that we had. So for that, um, we would add this page here to the my web, get pages, add um, this page too. And then let's run this again. Uh, 
and refresh this. Yeah, and now uh, the page is actually inside this web thing and the top level element here would be the web. And then we have two pages in there. So the next thing, if we want to load models, then uh, the way this would work is this code. So um, let's create this class and then go over that code. EMF model load. Uh, I guess we can put this back here so that we have it uh, a bit larger. Mm. Yep, that's just the main method. Now we've got some imports here. That's of course the web uh, that we are used to. Uh, this web page here. Uh, what's going on with the loader? Uh, we we don't have this method yet. Ah, sorry, it's right here. That was actually the code we wanted. Uh, I skipped a little bit. And this is the main method of it. So um, yeah, let's redo all of this. This is the code we wanted uh, for loading it. And um, then we wanted the main method to actually do the loading. So um, let's format this. And what this... <clears throat> we already looked what the, the main method does uh, very quickly. It instantiates this class itself uh, and, and calls the load method and it tries to retrieve a web instance. Um, and then it tries to print the description of the title uh, and then for every page, the name. So let's run this quickly just to see the output. Um, we see twice null uh, because maybe the description and the title are not set. Let's see. It reset the description and um, the title of the web. No, we didn't set it off the web. So um, my web set description. Um, the web uh, and then the title, right? The title. Web. Now we have to run this again to save it to the file uh, here so that then in the other one in this loader we can actually load it from the file. Um, yep, this works. Now let's see what this uh, load actually does because that's the, the interesting one if you want to load your own stuff. Um, what this load actually does is again we get this. An instance of the we, we instantiate the model just to make sure we can later work with it. Um, then we need to get again this resource uh, factory registry, the extension map. We need to put again website XMI resource factory so that we know that now we, we did this for writing, but now we do it also for reading. So we say whatever you have with the website extension, um, you're going to use this default factory to. To treat this resource, um, then we retrieve the resource, and then we we say resource give us your content, give us the first element you have saved, and cast it to web. So that's very very dangerous. Um, I mean, what we're doing here is we know that the first element that we put, because it's the only element we put, is of type web, but uh, this code will no longer work if we do things like um, if we put as the first element maybe the page, <clears throat> then our loading code is too fragile for that. So now we saw we have a web page as the first element, then the web. And now you see that uh, the writing it down to a file actually forgot about the composition relationship. So this is no longer um, stored in here. So it's this knowledge is lost. So that's why when you write stuff to an XMI file, make sure that you don't add things in addition um, that are already contained in other elements, because now you see this is a top level element and we forgot that this actually is part of the pages of this web. Um, <clears throat> and now the code for loading should also fail with a class cast exception. Um, yep, it did because it can't cast now the first element page to web. 
Um, yeah, so there are some. Um, yeah, you could get the contents and then maybe search through them um, to find whether there's any web element in it or you, you just do a normal to string or whatever. So if you persist things, uh, just be careful um, what elements you read and what elements you write because that's the ones that are being picked up. Um, so here now the first element is again the web because it's the only element and it has the pages again contained and then we should be able to load it and work with it. Okay, yeah, that worked again. Good, so this was about writing and reading Ecore models to file.